Hi there, I'm recording this on Monday, September 25th, and that means two things. I got to spend a few days out at uh, Fathom 5 National Park, which is a recognized dark sky park in Canada, and the towns around it were normal. They had streetlights, they had parks with, you know, sporting fields with lighting. My motel didn't even turn off the lights at after midnight. They just had really good directed lights. This is a thing you can do. It was nice. It's very nice. It's also time for the darkness news update. And let's just get into it. A preprint study, uh, which is to say it has not been peer reviewed yet, but you can read most of it right now, uh, done in the UK of 88,000 people, showed that people subject to light at night died. <laughs> uh, specifically, all of their risk factors for mortality rose. Again, preprint, more details coming, but um, yeah, no, light at night, it'll kill you. That's, that's, that's the news. Uh, speaking of killing you, uh, dim light at night will make your Alzheimer's symptoms worse in the sense that a circadian disruption will allow the buildup of neurotoxic proteins in your brain. We've also seen a study from Malaysia that shows that reducing light at night reduces reported stress of pregnant people. That seems good. The IES is offering a new nighttime lighting program. Uh, this is a series of 20 training sessions based on hosted by Janet Lanks Moyer. You can sign up right now. Might be of interest to some of you. Uh, Dark Sky International, uh, they're under one sky account. Their Under One Sky conference, which is coming up in November, has named their keynote speakers, Joe Marchant and Babak Tefreshi. Uh, Joe is a uh, writer on the subject of uh, human history and night skies, and Babak is a, a photographer for National Geographic. High temperatures are moving agricultural work in the Northeast to nighttime. Uh, this is already pretty common in the Southwest already to see hand-picked fruits get picked at night, a thing that can't possibly be bad for anyone. Nothing could possibly go wrong there. Uh, light pollution uh, is harming marine life. This is a meta-study, which is to say it synthesizes the results of a number of other studies done at Cornell, and it does confirm that multiple species are undergoing actual harm from light at night, even as you move away from the shore. There's a new study that shows that urban, non-migratory songbirds, their eyes are getting smaller. Uh, this is based out of Texas, around San Antonio. The Northern Cardinal and the Carolina Wren who live in the area year-round. Their eyes are getting smaller by about 5%. And the belief is that this is an adaptation to the amount of light at night. Smaller eye means less disruption, smaller focal path, you know. Literally an adaptation to the Anthropocene. So there we go. Uh, University of Copenhagen studying as... Um, linked mouse metabolism with seasonal lighting changes. We've also seen a new study that this is only of 11 panda bears, but they found that pandas do have to deal with jet lag as they move between zoos, and that zoos should be adjusting their lighting to sort of ease them into that, because uh, that transition makes them very inactive, which is bad for pandas. Uh, Fort Myers, Florida, has reported their worst year uh, recently for turtles, uh, compared to 2018, uh, 2023 featured 18 disorientations, which is to say nests crawling the wrong way, and they counted 272 lighting violations, as opposed to 2018 where they had about 70. Uh, Fort Worth has begun, uh, this is in Texas, has begun tracking bird strikes. Volunteers for the Audubon Society are walking around 10 specific buildings and trying to make an accurate count of any downed or injured birds they find over the migration period. Um, in Taiwan, Heihuan Mountain Park, which is the first uh, Dark Sea International recognized park in the region, might lose that status after the <laughs> Department of Transportation there put two very bright LED billboards. These are informational billboards with traffic information and hazard information, but oh man, they are so bright, and they might just pull the distinction. Uh, there's a man in Clayton, North Carolina, who is seeking to amend his uh, town's uh, lighting bylaws after his neighbor adds more than 20 flood lamps to his backyard and points them at his yard. He claims it looks a bit like a stadium now. 
uh, in Coconino County, Arizona. They are looking to modernize their lighting bylaws. They say they've had a uh, night sky protection ordinance since about the 80s, but obviously things are getting brighter, things are changing, and they're seeking public input right now. Boulder City, Nevada City Council got a hands-on with their new lighting. Uh, Boulder City also pursuing a uh, dark sky designation and is working to uh, switch over to LED at the same time. And they showed off the new light fixtures that are, you know, deeply recessed, well got, you know, just, just actually holding the devices and seeing how they protect against uplight and glare, and that's very good. And SpaceX has planned a new non-reflective coating. Uh, one of the concerns about, say, SpaceX, these low-orbit groups of satellites that are used for cell phone and internet connectivity, is that they're actually pretty bright and they can be distracting to ground-based observations of astronomers, but they're adding a new coating to the exterior that aims to be less reflective, which, you know, isn't half bad compared to... Uh, you know, a month or two ago when we were talking about a giant illuminated X in San Francisco. Anyway, that is the news for this week. I want to thank you for your time, your attention. Please consider a donation to the Lighting and Darkness Foundation. Uh, This show only happens on the backs of those donations. If you can, please do. If you can't, just tell a friend about us. Tell tell your city council. We'll, We'll help them out too. Until next time, have a good one.